Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use web components in Vue. The application that we're going to build is a CRUD view with a form for first name and last name. And we can add these people to a uh, data grid underneath. For this, I will use uh, components from the Vaadin component set. This is an open source Apache list instead of uh, standard space web components. We'll use the text field, the button, and the data grid. If you go to the website, you can see live examples and code uh, for how to achieve things. For instance, how to use the grid. We'll get back to this page in, in just a uh, moment. For this demo, I'm going to create a new project using the Vue CLI. If you already have an existing project uh, built with Vue, you should be able to apply the same steps to bring in web components into that project as well. So let's create a new project. Go with the defaults. OK, with the project created, let's go into the directory. The first thing that I want to do here is install the components themselves from npm. So we'll install button text field, button button, and button grid. Then, in addition to the components, we'll install a set of polyfills for browsers that don't ship with native support for web components, and a copy webpack plugin that we can use to copy over these uh, polyfills to our distribution folder. Okay, and with all the dependencies installed, we can go ahead and open this up in an editor. I'll use VS Code. The first thing that I want to configure here is copying over those polyfills and using them. For that, we'll create a view configuration file. And here, we'll uh, go ahead and import the copy webpack plugin. Then we'll export the configuration object. And in this object, uh, there's a property called configure webpack, which takes in a webpack configuration object. In the webpack configuration, we want to define the plugins, which is an array. In our case, that array only contains one item, the copy webpack plugin. So we'll instantiate a new copy webpack plugin. Uh, this will take in an array and configurations. Uh, in this case, we'll only have one of those as well. The first thing will be the context, so where we're copying from. The second property is from, so the pattern that we want to copy. In our case, all the JavaScript files. And finally, two will be where we want to copy these two. So in our case, the distribution folder, and we want to create a new web components folder underneath it, like that. So now that those are getting copied over to our distribution folder, we can go into the public folder and open the index.html. And here in the head section, we will add those scripts. The first script that I'm loading is the web components loader. This is a dynamic loader script that will do feature detection and figure out what polyfills, if any, a browser needs. And then optionally, we're loading a ES5 adapter for projects that have been transpiled down to ES5. OK, so that should take care of all the configuration that we need. Let's run this and see that it works. We can run the application with npm run serve. OK, and now the application should be up on localhost 8080. So we'll open it up, and you should see uh, this Welcome to your Vue.js app. If you open up the Dev Tools and the Network tab here and refresh, you should be able to see that the Web Components Loader gets loaded without any issues. OK, so now we are ready to start using our components. So let's go back into the code. Essentially, we'll hijack this Hello World uh, component and we'll just take out everything that's in there right now and replace it with our own stuff. So I'll just empty these out and in the script tag the first thing that I want to do is import the components so the button, the grid, and the text field like that and then I'll define 
the data model that we're using. So we'll be working with uh, person objects. A person will have a first name and a last name. We'll create a new class, person, and a constructor on this where we initialize the first name. Uh, this is the first name equal to empty string, and then the same thing for last name. With that in place, we can go into the component configuration. In our case, we're not taking in any properties from the outside, so we can remove this. But what we will define is the data object. This will be a function. And the function will return an object with the data model. The data model, or the state for our object, will contain two things. First, an array of people. We'll call it people, and it, that'll be an empty array. The second thing we'll have is the current person that we're editing in our form. And we will initialize this to a new person object. In addition to the data model, or the state, we want to define the methods on our component. So we'll define the methods. This will be an object. And the only method that we have will be called add person. This will be a function. And in this function, what we want to do is we want to update this people array to be a new array with the added person. And then we want to reset the current person. So this dot people is equal to a new array with all the previous people that we had and uh, this uh, current person. After that, we can take this dot current person and assign it to a new person object, essentially clearing it out. OK, so that will take care of the logic for our component. We are ready to go into the template and start using our web components. In view, you need to have a single root component or a single root element that you expose. So we'll create a, a just a plain div here. Uh, and inside of it, we'll create our form, first of all. So I'll create a new div with a class form. And inside here, I will have the text fields and the button. So a button text field. Here, instead of using vModel like you would normally in a view uh, form, we're going to do the binding manually. The reason for this is that uh, view uh, handles components differently from native inputs. But in our case, our bot and text field behaves exactly like a normal input. So essentially, whenever you use vModel to do something like that, what's happening under the hood is that uh, view expands that to a bind and listens for an input. So we're essentially going to do that same thing manually in our, in our code. So first of all, we will bind the value. And we will bind the value to current person dot first name. First name like that. And then we will listen for the input event. And in here, we'll assign the current person first name uh, to the event target value, like that. So essentially, again, this is doing the same thing as using vModel. In addition to these, I will add a label, which will be the input uh, prompt here. The label will be first name. Then we'll duplicate this and change it for last name. And lastly, add the button for adding a person. So here we'll use a button button for add. We'll bind the click event to add person. And we might as well, while we're at it, we'll bind the key up event dot enter. So only for enter keys. And we'll bind that to the add person method as well. All right. So that takes care of the form that we use for entering new people. The second part that we want is a grid where we can display these. So we'll create a new bottom grid here. 
And this grid will be bound to that array of people. The syntax for that looks like this. So we're binding to the uh, items property. And that will be bound to the people array. This dot prop means that we want you to set the property value instead of trying to serialize this array and setting it as an attribute. Now that the grid is bound to this array, we need to tell it how to map properties on those objects to columns. The way we do that is if we go into our browser here, we can look at some of the example code here. You can see that there's a path, path uh, attribute that we can define which will tell the grid how to map these. So in this case, uh, the headers are the same, just that our path is not nested. Instead, our first name path will be just first name, and the last name path will be last name. OK. Let's go into our browser and see if this works. We'll go into the browser here. Uh, the first thing that we can see is looks a little wonky, so we'll uh, fix that up first. I'll go into the main app here. Uh, let's remove centering. We don't want that, and we can remove the logo, make it look a little easier. And then here in our own style, we can style the web components the same way as anything else. So I'll add a class for the form and anything in it, add a little bit of spacing. So let's do margin right to, say, 4 pixels. Save that. And now this looks a whole lot nicer. Let's see if it works. And there you go. So we can add people, uh, kind of work with uh, custom components very much the same way as we would with view components. So in conclusion, uh, it's pretty straightforward to use uh, custom elements or web components in your view project. Uh, if you want to support older browsers, remember to include those polyfills. In other cases, just import the uh, components and use them as any other components in your view application. In general, uh, I would recommend using custom components, web components as the leaf nodes, and any kind of bigger components or compositions or views are better, better left off. Uh, as view components. All right, and that's it. So thanks for watching.